talk about this beautiful book that I just finished at like 5.30 this morning and how much I loved it. If you didn't see my unboxing of it, it's called Sixth Grave on the Edge and it's the sixth installment of the Charlie Davidson series by Dorinda Jones. I'm gonna say a few words that describe basically how I feel about the book and then pretty much if you haven't read it you need to get the fuck off this video and come back when you have because I'm gonna spoil it so bad by talking about how much I love it. Okay, number one. Can I just say that Dorinda's writing style is always beautiful and always makes you laugh. And I kind of just, I don't know. I'm in love with these books and there's really no other series like it. I stated in my first initial impression video that it kind of reminded me of The Ghost Whisperer, but honestly that's not really true. Now that six books have come out and so much has escalated. It's just a beautiful, beautiful world that she's created. And oh my gosh, I'm misting up what the fuck. Anyway, so if you haven't read it, you need to go away. Well, maybe not yet, because first I'm going to read the synopsis on the jacket, like a Momo. Okay. Woo! Reading time, guys. Okay. Most girls might think twice before getting engaged to someone like Reyes Farrow, but Charlie Davidson is not most girls. She's a paranormal private investigator and a grim reaper in training who's known to be a bit of a hell raiser, especially after a few shots of caffeine. Her beloved Reyes may be the only begotten son of evil, but he's dark and sultry and deeply sexy and everything Charlie could hope for, really. But when the FBI f uh, file on Reyes' childhood happens to land in her lap, she can't help herself. She opens it, and then the real fun begins. First, Charlie finds a naked corpse riding in her shotgun. Riding in her shotgun? I don't think that's even possible. Riding shotgun in her car. Uh, then a man loses his soul in a card game. Throw in a deaf boy who sees dead people and a woman running from mobsters and a very suspicious Reyes and things can't get any worse for Charlie. Unless, of course, the twelve beasts of hell are unleashed. Oh, where do I begin? I want to talk about how hilarious it was to have the first joke of the book be about, oh gosh, now I don't even remember what it was, so I'm going to have to open chapter one and read it because it was the first line and I just died. A girl, a mocha latte, and a dead man walk into a bar. How could I not laugh at that? And then, okay, so you have this Mr. Andrulis. Andrewless? I, I never could really pronounce the name. Who's sitting naked with his dick out in her car and he's like old and she can't help but look at his penis and she's sitting there trying to, to draw this thing, this tattoo that he has that says Andrewless on it. And it winds up looking like Daffy Duck with eyelashes. What a hilarious mental image. But then you fast forward to her dad saying, you know, that he's going away and blah 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 and then her stepmom Denise comes in and she's being all bitch-tastic just like she always is and the thing that bothered me about that was that you don't know what happened with that part but really I guess we're not supposed to and that's why there's another book coming out in October. Fast forward to Mr. Joyce losing his soul to the dealer, and I'm going, what the fuck? But then I'm sitting there picturing um, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy as the dealer, and I don't know why. I couldn't help it. Even though Pete Wentz is nowhere near 19, and that's how old the dealer's supposed to be. He just seems some kind of, like, charming, and that's kind of, I don't know, I got this, like, Pete wentz vibe from him. But, uh, then 
you have Quentin and Amber running away and like, well, not really running away, but they skipped school and they rode on that thing and then the dead girl comes up and gets stuck to Charlie's face and I'm just picturing the like freakiest like ring-esque type bullshit that could ever happen. Just like, bah! Ugh. But then, finally, she figures out, you know, the girl obviously has mental problems and her name is Miranda and the reason she has mental problems is because she's been abused by her mom. And pretty much, inadvertently, her mom killed her by bludgeoning her to the head, even though later on in the book when Charlie goes to confront her, she's like, I didn't do that. And then, you know, this bitch is so psycho that she even fucked up Miranda's brother and now he's sitting there playing Russian roulette with a bottle of Oxycontin pills. Like, what the fuck is wrong with this lady that she let her kids get this fucked up? And she doesn't even care. If I was Charlie, I would have done the same thing that she did. You know, I wish the dealer would have come right then and there and been like, mm, yeah, I'm sold. Because, yeah. That's a bitch who deserved to have her soul eaten by the dealer. But I love the fact that even though the dealer is a soul devouring like Deva or whatever, he still was a likable character and I don't know if that makes me weird or what. And then of course you have the Mendozas trying to frame, well no, first you have Captain Eckhart trying to frame Charlie by making it look like she's buying all these drugs off these losers on the street because he thinks that he's responsible for killing some kid who raped his mentally challenged sister when he was like seven years old. What? And then you fast forward. And then you have the Mendozas who are sitting there trying to uh, get Charlie to, I guess, lead them to Emily whatever her last name is, I can't remember. So she doesn't do it, but she leads them. Well, she, she thinks that she doesn't do it. So she puts on a wig and in true, true, I can't say it, true Charlie fashion, you know, she gets herself into a heap of trouble. She gets up there and like, it turns out that Jessica and Reyes are with the Mendozas on top of this like silo thing and the Mendozas go pick which one lives or dies and she picks Reyes so they push Jessica off the side of the building she falls she dies and then inadvertently they still push Reyes off and you're like <gasps> what the fuck and then all of a sudden, you know, Charlie gets thrown off and she sees Reyes laying there all, you know, dead, for lack of a better term, because he was dead. And you just, your heart breaks for her. And then the Deva shows up because Charlie marks all of the Mendoza's souls and they all wind up killing each other after Charlie falls. And she's sitting there and she's depressed and she's trying to get her ankle out from underneath whatever the hell it's caught on. I don't know because I read that part at like 5.30 this morning, honestly. And I'm probably going to have to go back and reread the book. But, so the diva's like, no, we need you alive and you can't be depressed and this that and the other so Reyes comes up and corporally out of his body and is the demon form of himself and Charlie kills that side but then she says Rayzel come back to me so he does but it's like he I don't know at first I thought, you know, maybe she just killed the demon side of him, which wouldn't be a big issue, but then she goes and she finds Rocket and Strawberry Shortcake in the asylum with Cookie after the funeral of the Joyce's 
four-year-old daughter. And he goes, well, now things have changed. You really shouldn't have done that, Miss Charlotte. Because now somebody else has to die. And she goes, who? And he says, you, Miss Charlotte, you have to die. And it's just, it breaks my heart. And of course, then there's the ending where everyone's all, what have you done and what's going on? And that's not, the prophecies were wrong. Well, the prophecies have been changed because it turns out, you know, the nuns, first of all, Garrett Swopes comes and wakes them up in the middle of the night, Charlie and Reyes. And then you have Cookie bounding in with a mask on her face, which is hilarious, a hilarious mental image. But then you have um, the nuns and Sister Mary, whatever, I, can't, I can never remember that nun's name, the one that can hear angels. And she's sitting there going, what have you done? What have you done, Charlie? What have you done? Because the angels won't stop shouting and she can hear them and she it's just driving her nuts. And then all of a sudden, you know, Garrett says the prophecies were wrong. There's two daughters. And it's like, what? How could there be two daughters? And then all of a sudden, it kind of dawns on her, you know, that she's pregnant. The second daughter is the daughter of the daughter. It's the daughter's daughter. And then basically, the book ends, and then you get Reyes's point of view from the night that the Mendozas came to um, hold Charlie at gunpoint, where right before that point they had had incorporeal, corporeal sex thing. And I'm guessing that that's important because that must have been the time that she got pregnant. However, now I'm really ready for October and seventh grave and no body. <laughs> And if you made it this far, I really appreciate it because I feel like I've rambled a lot. Um, if you like my videos and reviews, please subscribe. And if you don't, that's your problem. But I hope you do because later on today, I'm supposed to be getting a box from Amazon.com. Amazon. It's not Amazon. It's uh, BarnesandNoble.com that contains two books, which will make a grand total of, I think, eight books that I have to haul for you guys later today. So if I post two videos and I'm in the same shirt, it's because it's the same day and it's later that day. Because I checked the tracking on my UPS box and it's out for delivery in a town that's about 15 minutes from me, so it should be here any point today. But you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Bye!